Central banks around the world are eviscerating, eliminating the middle class by bringing up energy prices and prices on other necessities, by wars, by inflating their housing costs and their education costs, but the richest among us can own stocks and bonds and real estate and become wealthier and wealthier. The economic structure, the foundation underneath the global economy, is predicated and based upon the sand. The Fed has privatized banking risk with repo alone $11 trillion. If they did not bail out the repo market and banks this is what would have happened. 1. Banks would stay out of repo and sit on their cash if the Fed didn't bail repo out. And 2. The overnight interest rate would be 25%. Recession is how it all ends. That triggers mass unemployment. That triggers house price implosion. That triggers consumers to stop spending, debt default. The Fed prints more cash to bail out the banks again. 100 trillion dollars. Then Dieter helicopter money and a cup of coffee will be 250 dollars. And who is picking up junk bonds? Pension funds. Tesla is valued higher than Ford and GM combined. The stock market is massively overvalued. The money pension funds pay out to retires in years to come. That money will have very watered down purchasing power. If you are invested in gold silver or bitcoin, the end game will be very, very different. Brexit and the Chinese debt bubble are the next bucket of ice cold water thrown over the stock markets. The stock market is the inflation sink for quantitative easing, deflationary depression in real stuff and actual earnings in the real economy. The Fed will print 30 trillion plus in 2020 alone, easily. That's 10 trillion more than they did at the height of the collapse in 2009. 30 trillion add 15% inflation equals 4.5 trillion equals 34.5 trillion dollars they'll need to print this year just to get through the year. And Trump just gave 1 trillion dollars to Wall Street in bailouts on Christmas. Plus 2.5 trillion to the military. Wow, with that we could have paved all major cities in the USA with gold or simply eradicate poverty all over the world. Fed is backed into a corner, all they know is pump because it's the only stick they have or understand. So it's going to explode, I've taken all my cash out of the banking system as it's going to disappear very soon. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. You own an asset in a bubble that can buy a nice car but then only buys a cup of tea to calm your nerves after the bubble pops, that's the brutality of a bubble. Bubbles are like balloons. They burst in one of three ways. Either via deliberate pricking, inattentive float towards sharp objects, or via overinflation. So far, the balloon is not being pricked, it's tethered, and thus, not liable to dangerous wanderings, but it seems like it's being pumped up. Now, we can't reach a definitive conclusion yet, on what the Fed is doing with the air pump. Perhaps they're attempting to discern the maximum elasticity of the balloon, a perilous undertaking, or maybe they want to pump it to explosion. We can't really say just yet, but we'd simply aver that once maximum elasticity is determined, assuming the balloon doesn't burst in the determination, then the only prudent gambit, is energetic and periodic air release, to restore the balloon to a state whereby, only determined pricking can burst it. Concisely, don't take air pumping too far. Don't pump beyond elasticity. Else, the balloon will explode uncontrollably. And on that note, we'll say no more about financial calibration. Until winter of fallow ends. A watched pot always boils. It just seems like it takes longer, although the actual time to boil remains the same each and every time provided the inputs are consistent. The biggest fallacy out there is GDP growth. If you add in the hidden costs plus the reported ones, then the US is actually going further into debt by at least 2.5 trillion per year. That is a negative 11% growth. Add in the 1.5% reported GDP growth and you end up with an economy nosediving at 9.5% a year, this is not recessionary, it is depressionary. The bumbling idiots on TV and in the media who claim to be journalists but are nothing more than government-sponsored teleprompt readers, along with the Fed, the government, and your favorite presidents, from both Democrats and Republicans, will have you believe this is the greatest economy ever. Call me crazy, but if I ran a million dollar a year business, yet my income was negative 100k each and every year, does that make me the most successful businessman in the world? Americans are apathetic morons for the most part, and they believe whatever the state-sponsored media, whether online, TV, or radio leads them to believe. The stupidity and gullibility of humans never cease to amaze me.
Today, amidst the several factors that are alarming international investors, from falling oil prices to the specter of a global economic recession and deflation in Europe, one of the most critical and less well-known aspect is China's debt bubble. As of last year, the national debt of China, which is the total amount of money owed by the Chinese government and all state organizations and government branches. It stands at roughly 5.2 trillion United States dollars, which is around 64% of GDP. This figure, though, does not include local government financing vehicles. So we should multiply it by at least 3.5 for this figure to be right, then consider adding value for China's shadow banking. Local debt being the biggest problem in China. In July 2019, the Institute of International Finance reported that in the first quarter of 2019, China's total stock of corporate, household and government debt rose sharply to over US$40 trillion and is now exceeding 303% of gross domestic product GDP, from 297% in the same period a year earlier, the IIF wrote in a report. China's debt now accounts for around 15% of world global debt. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for what may be coming. The idea that China is somehow a frugal saving nation that doesn't have a lot of debt is, at this point, bluntly wrong. As of today, China is very much past the tipping point where the debt simply can no longer be ignored. China's debt to GDP ratio is growing as its economy loses steam. For the past few years, China has been on a borrowing binge. The world's second biggest economy, which is slowing, is past a point where it cannot ignore its enormous debt anymore. The cost of servicing the debt distracts from almost everything else. After years of rapid expansion, China is abiding a slowing economy, and because of this, China recently made several major monetary policy easing announcements in 2019. The debt levels in China rapidly shot up a few years ago as its banks extended record amounts of credit to drive growth. It all started with the credit bubble, which began in earnest in 2009. Back then, China was trying to plug up the holes left by the US and the European financial crisis. China is export dependent. When its two biggest clients fell because of its own credit bubble, China did what all economies do in crisis, stimulate, stimulate, and stimulate some more. Today China has a debt to GDP ratio of a whopping 300%. First, let's make a little comparison. The U.S. total debt to GDP, which includes household and corporate debt, is 331.7%. Since the first quarter of 2018, the total debt in the United States of America has risen by US$2.9 trillion, US dollars, bringing the entire debt mountain to an all-time high of over US$69 trillion US dollars in the first quarter of 2019. And there is a whole host of other hidden debt. China had kick-started stimulus this year as the economy is slowing down. Just like in the US, the Central Bank of China is currently running its mini QE program. China is still a top-down, centralized system. So if state-run banks are handing out money, you just take it. Many Chinese entrepreneurs are used to borrow as much as possible, even if the core business doesn't need it. Such entrepreneurs are system exploiters who should receive no protection whatsoever. Last year more than 18,000 companies filed bankruptcy petitions in Chinese courts, and that is about twice as much as the past year. In China, bankruptcy had previously been an unlikely action to take. Bond defaults likewise hit record numbers last year at 125, which was five times the number in 2015. So far, in 2019, defaults are running at an even faster pace. So they have basically backed themselves into a corner. Nobody has any real clue how much debt actually exists coming out of China. Rampant shadow banking, epic money laundering, and an absolutely insane amount of money printing. Is the Fed printing? Of course, they are. The Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank? Yes, and yes. But the People's Bank of China makes all of them look like rank amateurs with fiduciary guilt complex compared to what the Communist Party-run Central Bank in China is getting away with. The People's Bank of China simply prints its way out of it. In which case, we will finally end up with a hyper-inflationary crack up. It seems this is the only logical solution. Currencies won't revalue because of market mechanisms. The market is broken. Our institutions are broken. Look around. Lolita Express, live organ harvesting in China, gangs of pedophile cannibals running the global economy, whatever terrible heinous abuses we imagine.
it's all much, much worse. So, they will print and print and print. Because that's the only way out. They will keep their fingers on the scales. You won't know what side is up, but you better believe one thing, they are printing like crazy, and it isn't going to go on forever. And when it breaks, it will be the biggest deluge since Noah. The Chinese economy is definitely slowing down, and there are a lot of headwinds, plenty of companies are leaving China as China is becoming a much harder investment case for several reasons. The downward pressure is growing due to the global economic growth, with decreasing trade and investment, increasing protectionism as well as other headwinds facing the domestic economy. This slow motion train wreck is gathering speed. It's 1929 on steroids in China. Meanwhile, the Fed is pumping $500 billion liquidity, and the actual government is spending more than $200 billion more per month in 2020, a 12% year-on-year increase. This is an infinite Ponzi finance in a financial perpetual motion machine. Modern monetary theory will inevitably morph the defective parts of the reality-defying machine and make them work. Utopia nowhere, no place, here we come. How anyone is buying this fake trade deal and that China will ever buy more than a token gesture of our agricultural products is beyond comprehension. But none of that matters here. What matters is the narrative. And as long as the stupid sheeple but the narrative, that's all that matters. Very few are prepared for what's coming. There are now riots in Brazil and Argentina because of increased food prices. That's a fast reaction to the food exports to China. If China buys more agricultural products, food inflation will kick in. Should $50 billion in agricultural purchases in a year or two, depending on what swamp pimp you're listening to, mean $5 trillion in market cap? I've tried to point out to all those deluded into thinking that better corporate deals for American globalist corporations in China do nothing for them, but it doesn't sink in. The whole trade deal is comical. $25 billion a year in agricultural purchases in a $23 trillion economy is nothing. The Fed will purchase $60 billion a month in government debt for the foreseeable future. Perhaps that's why these clowns pretend that a trade deal actually means something. Kind of like the impeachment act. All shows to distract from what's really happening. More centralized confiscation and consolidation through counterfeiting. Bottom line, this whole thing is going to blow up at some point. Trade Bitcoin. And also, keep investing in gold and silver. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. And subscribe. Thank you.